up, D-League? Welcome back. Last week brought us new life for some and abortions for others. We are lucky enough this week to have a sponsor for our show. So before we get started, let's have a word from our sponsor. Was it something I said or something I did? Did my words not come out right? Though I tried not to hurt you. Though I tried. But I guess that's why they say every rose has its thorn. Let's take a look now at our picks from last week. Well, not perfect this week, which I know is a shock to everybody. Apparently betting on Jamie and Dave is a stupid-ass idea. Jamie lost to the only person that nobody wanted to get cockier. And Dave, we'll get to you in a minute. And normally now we'd go into trades, because last week there was a trade. But it was so bad it's not worth giving its own section to. Dave gave not one, but two picks for the Dirty Sanchez. Even our resident Mexican knows better than to trust a Mexican quarterback. I think Dave misunderstood when they said ground and pound. This would be a good time to roll into our polls section, but unfortunately Jamie's a lazy ass and isn't really taking it all that seriously. It's just putting up polls about who's going to be the biggest winner or who's going to be the biggest loser. So instead we'll just move on to an interview with the man who dismantled him last week. So James, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Thanks for having me back on the show, Burks. I'm doing pretty good, just sitting here baking like I usually do on a Saturday, eating cupcakes. First question is going to be, how does it feel to field the number three team in the D-League right now? How does it feel to be currently in third? No. Honestly, I, <laughs> honestly, I should be in second. I don't think so. Two weeks ago, loss by Rex Grossman is brutal. And the week before that, losing to what, arguably the crappiest team by Adam, also kicking the butt. So, I mean, I'm this close to being first, really. Well, I guess not in points, but at least second. So you just delivered Jamie his first loss. How easy was that for you? Honestly, it didn't surprise me. I'm actually surprised he's not hanging out with Dave at the bottom of the league, how much his team's underperforming currently. Last week, you took on the number two team in the league. This week, you take on the number one team in the league. Will you repeat? Honestly, I haven't looked that close of a matchup. But knowing Stan's team and my team, I'm going to have to say yes. I'm definitely going to beat him this week. Or why not? Whatever he's due for a loss, he might, as well, might as well be me. And last but not least, what did your wife think about you spending all day baking a cupcake just so you can put a penis in it? As far as the cupcake goes that was baked last week? Yeah. I uh, actually technically neither one of us baked it, and the penis was all me. Is that right, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Actually, pouring cupcake mix into into the pan. Get these ready for Dan this week. Yum yum. Well, James, thanks for being on the show. I look forward to the next time. Let's take a look now at our rapist of the week. Once again, as our rapist of the week is this guy. As easy as Travis rolls over, though, it's hard to call it rape when he's that willing. I dropped 36 plus points on Trav last week. I could get used to this rape thing. Let's take a look now at our biggest loser. Bitch, I'm about to ball this. So IQ of 48, and I'm what some people call mentally retarded. He was retarded. I'm a driver, I'm a winner. Things are gonna change, I can feel it. Only reason I'm crying, because of the adrenaline. <laughs> 
Instead of giving Travis back-to-back losers of the week, I decided this week it's going to be Dave. Dave, you made the worst team in the league look like a stud. I put some highlights together in case you missed Nate's performance. See if you can guess which one Dave is. The Honey Badger has been referred to by the Guinness Book of World Records as the most fearless animal in all of the animal kingdom. It really doesn't give a shit. Now watch this. Look, a snake's up in the tree. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit. And then look. Get away from me, says the snake. Get away from me. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger smacks the shit out of it. Ew, that's disgusting. Oh, it runs backwards and it passes out. Look at that sleepy fuck. Way to be a Honey Badger, Nate. Let's take a look now at the previews. First up we have Mind Grapes taking on Rainbow Warriors. This week I get our resident whipping boy Dave. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw most of Dave's team was taking on either the Jets or Green Bay, I got pretty excited. And then you make a trade for Sanchez and start him in the week that they proclaim they're gonna move away from their craptastic passing attack and be a run first team. I'd feel a lot better if I had Miles Austin back and didn't have to start a Raiders wide receiver. Although they did get a good bump in fantasy value this week. It'll be nice now that the Raiders won't have to start some shitty wide receiver like Darius Hayward Bay for no fucking reason as their number one. My wide receivers could screw me over this week. Vincent Jackson's got like seven fucking things wrong with him right now. And Colson's coming back after limited snaps last week and hopefully it's not going to be limited this week. Which basically means he's just one of ten people that Breeze could throw to. A running back though, it could become a vicious cockfight. Beanie's coming off a monster game. And McCoy's going against a pretty suspect defense in Buffalo. Hopefully all of Sanchez's touchdowns if he gets to throw in the air to Keller. If you didn't know this, it's pretty much a fact that Dave will start anybody with the last name of Kowski. He's probably secretly hoping Andy Dalton goes down so he can go grab Bruce. Dave loves his Pollocks, and that's the reason why this week he's going to lose. Next up we have Blackbeard's Delight taking on multiple scorgasms. Just when Travis thought things couldn't get any worse, here comes that man again. Jamie stumbled last week in a match that he should have won, which gives a man hope. But I don't like the odds of lightning striking twice here. Breeze could end up in a shootout against Carolina if Cam Newton goes off, which would pretty much spell disaster for Trav. If Rapeslinger can stand up for more than two seconds in the fucking pocket, he should have a pretty decent game actually this week. Holmes has a good matchup as well, which he'll need against Macklin, Williams, and Jennings. AP and Foster should wreck shot, but they do have a propensity for fucking over Jamie. Jamie's a pretty big favorite here. I can't imagine that he drops two in a row. So unfortunately, I think Trav falls again this week. Next up we have Team Disenfranchise taking on Mavericks. Dan's train hits Cupcake City today in our marquee matchup of the week. Can the luckiest fuck alive best one other team this week? Dan's gonna have to wait till Monday to find out though because he's got five people playing in that game. As always, James is outmatched in pretty much every position, but in the past it hasn't really mattered, he's still pulled it off. He's keeping up his trend this week of seeing if he can start a shittier and shittier quarterback and still win with one hand tied behind his back. This week it's Hasselbeck. James recently informed me that he's in pretty good shape at quarterback. It was about as convincing as when I said I was in pretty good shape to play quarterback. Dan only has a good duo this week at wide receiver instead of the trio, which is nice. Unfortunately, that duo is the two best wide receivers in the NFL, so that kind of stings. James is starting a good one in Wes Welker, though. The running back matchup here will make you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit. Forte and McGay here are taking on Gorn Ingram. If that doesn't do it for you, maybe the battle of washed up tight ends will. In the end, I think Dan rolls on here. I don't think he has a good shot at taking a loss until he faces Jamie. Next up, we have Rare Treats taking on Seppuku. Welcome to our Toilet Bowl matchup of the week. Nate has managed to put together a real record, while Adam's managed to put together a real pile of shit. Adam took offense to us saying that Nate was the worst team in the league, and he said, fuck that, I'll show you guys. It's so bad at this point that Nate's actually projected to beat him by 10 points. Granted, that's pretty much due to Team Rogers, who put up like 52 points last week, so he's projected for about 30 this week. If you put all their wide receivers back into the rookie draft, I'm not sure you'd feel comfortable taking any of them towards the top of the first round. At running back, you got Fred Jackson's crazy ass taking on MJD. The rest of the running backs are just pretty much along for the ride here. Jared Cook apparently still has a roster spot and now a starting spot on Adam's squad. He'll be going up against Kevin Boss. I'm pretty much just going to stop there before I throw up. I think Nate ends up winning this match and taking his third win in a row which is probably the craziest shit I've ever said in my life. Next up we have Foster Children taking on KC Reunited. Remember when Mason Foster needed three tackles to give Colin the win over Adam, and he finally got that third tackle in the fourth quarter of the game? Colin's going to need a little bit more than that this week. The Dream Team heads to Buffalo this week for Colin. We'll see if Vic still has that magic, or if Tom Brady got his back. 
My wide receiver Colin has the edge. And for the first time in a while, Sean doesn't have the edge at running back. He's hoping that Mendenhall gets the start this week. Because if he doesn't, he's looking to start an Ernest Graham and maybe Javon Ringer. I don't even fucking know. He probably should just pick somebody up off the waiver wire. If there's ever a week to make him happy that he has Dallas Clark, it's going to be this week. If he can't put up points against Kansas City, he may as well just shoot himself. I'm torn this week because I love watching both of these teams lose. But the reality is, Sean's got a snowball chance in hell of winning this week. Pop it up. Wrap that shit up, B. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Tune in next week to watch me go 5-0 again in picks.